Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's our favorite time of the week because, Thomas, tell them why it's our favorite time of the week. Uh, we got new stuff on the table. Let's check them out. All right, starting things off this week with our latest exclusive from CJRB. It is the large pyrite in our titanium bolstered black micarta inlaid configuration. There it is. Uh, really cool knife. Pretty good value on this too. Uh, I'll get to the price here in a minute, but what you're getting, 3.7 inch drop point blade, RPM9 powder metallurgy steel, uh, pretty much just as thin, actually, I can't confirm this uh, 100%, but it's, I think it's just as thin as the standard pyrite. So with the taller blade here, the actual uh, primary bevel is going to be even narrower than on the, uh, the standard pyrite. So it's a bigger knife, but man, it is going to just plain slice exceptionally well with very little uh, to kind of get in its own way, so to speak. It's just gonna pew, laser beam through some stuff, I would say. Titanium for the bolsters, as mentioned, goes really nicely, creates kind of this classy look, we think, with the black micarta, a very uh, you know, nice, rich black, not deep 100% black, but it's certainly not a kind of gray, ashy black, which some things can kind of become that way sometimes. Really classy look. And titanium milled pocket clip on the right side as well. Very, very cool. Handles stay nice and slim too. This is going to be a very, uh, one of those big easy knives we like to talk about. Very easy to carry in the pocket, not gonna take up too much space, not gonna be too bulky, and provide you with a lot of cutting power too. Button lock. Nice. You can do the, the wrist flick thing open. You can use the thumb studs, no problem. You can close it more slowly if you wish. We've got ball bearings in the pivot to help that action stay nice and floaty like that. Yet the lockup is nice and secure. And for all this, just under 80 bucks. Less than 10 bucks more than the small version of our exclusive as well. So check it out. Next up, we've got new versions of the Tactile Maverick now available with G10 which is a pretty neat. Few different colors, uh, price on them coming in about $279. We've got this red right here, which I think is the, uh, the coolest version uh, that they released just because I see a lot of black knives, black handled knives, a few of them on the table here. Uh, but black is available, OD green, purple, and this red right here. It has the same uh, milled line pattern as the titanium and the rich light versions has the same magna cut blade as those versions as well. And kind of similarly to the pyrite, it's not quite as long uh, or as broad in fact, but it's not quite as long in nature, but it is also something that prioritizes that slim, easy carryability, as you can see as I turn it around here. The blade itself is nice and thin. The grind is pretty high. The magna cut steel is going to hold an edge a long time. It's gonna be virtually rust proof and gonna be quite tough as well. So your edge stability is gonna be good. That's where it's primarily gonna pay dividends on a thinner folder like this because you're not, you're not hacking on stuff like you would with this knife, which we'll get to here in a, a little bit, of course. Uh, the scales themselves also nice and slim and contoured to slim them down even further. As such, this is a very easy knife to hold on to. It's not a hand filling grip. This is more about precision in a roughly three and a half inch blade length right there. The pocket clip is raised off of standoffs here, right side tip up only in this case. The crossbar lock here is ambidextrous, however, and it is tuned quite nicely. Very nice indeed. Thumb studs as well, if you'd rather open it that way. Just a really, really sweet knife. Uh, and I think, do we have any of the titanium ones in stock at the moment as well? If you want one of those, we do in fact. Uh, so you can check out uh, all of the Mavericks at the link in the description. Next up, another kind of big easy knife, although a little bit chunkier, uh, but not so much as to uh, completely take it outside the realm of that kind of uh, description. Uh, we've got a couple superlative knives, superlative being uh, the collaborative brand between Enrique Pena and Jared Oser. This is the Matador. Uh, with about a 3.8 inch M390 blade. Uh, this is a Riot made knife which is to say the quality is exceptional and all of the parts look fantastic as well. About $294 for this. 
uh, comes with the M390, as mentioned, titanium frame and Mars Valley fat carbon uh, inlays, not just onlays. They are embedded just a little bit, as you can see from the tail right there. And they are on both sides as well. Got some really cool details going on. I like the floating backspacer. You can see kind of the uh, pins in the uh, in the cracks in between where it floats. One of the other cool things, and uh, I haven't taken one apart, so I can't confirm exactly how they're doing this. If one of you in the comments has, let me know. But you can see you can adjust the pivot here from the backside, but it appears no visible pivot there on the front, unless it's this piece of titanium uh, right there. I'm not entirely sure. So again, like I said, I haven't taken these apart because I don't, uh, we don't go around taking apart uh, our inventory. So action is quite nice. We've got a single ambidextrous thumb hexagon there on the top with some stepped ridges underneath to help with the grip. No flipper tab here, just that, uh, that thumb opening or finger opening, which gives it a very clean profile when closed. Again, that's going to help it be a, a little bit kinder in the pocket than some broader designs can be. And when you need to rock and roll, you've got a ton of edge retention with that big M390 blade. Very nice. Uh, this, this next superlative is also a Riot and it's a little more, little more adventurous even. Uh, about 264 for it. And the blade steel here, uh, well, first it's a slip joint as opposed to a locking knife. And man, did you hear that? It's like echoing around the room here. That is really snappy, really awesome feeling walk and talk right there. On top of that, the blade steel is M4, another very tough steel kind of, you know, magna cut. We talked about the uh, advantage of toughness on a, uh, a non hard use folder uh, and a slip joints are almost never hard use folders. Again, your edge stability right there is going to be really nice. So, not going to have to worry as much about chipping essentially is the biggest takeaway there. The blade is also a little bit thicker on this knife as well with kind of a saber height flat grind. This is not going to be a, a super efficient slicer, but if any slip joint is going to be kind of hard use, this is getting into that territory. It's got enough kind of blade chunk there that, you know, you wouldn't feel bad about really pushing this maybe past what knives, sometimes should do certainly what smaller slip joints do you think they quote unquote should do. Moral of the story is you've got a lot of strength in this knife blade right here. The handles, titanium liners with integral bolsters and the marbled carbon fiber onlays on each side, really cool where it kind of cuts away from the liner, uh, the titanium underneath, but it's subtle because everything is still kind of blackened. So you get a little bit of visual interest there keeping things spicy. And for carry on this, since there is no pocket clip, they do supply a black leather pocket slip. So you can slip it into the pocket with possibility of other things living in there as well. And you'll have to worry about less about it uh, kind of mucking up the blade or the handle when it shares that pocket space. Really cool. Blade shape Thomas is not a reverse Tonto. I'd call that a clip point. Well, get used to it. Uh, a couple more slip joints to talk about a uh, new Benchmade limited edition dropped this week of the Weekender two blade, three implement pocket uh, slip joint blade pocket knife slip joint thing words uh, $342 for this. You've got S 90 V blade steel. That's the biggest difference over the standard version. So a lot more edge retention. And of course, you've got the roughly three inch clip point blade and the more like two inch uh, drop point or pen blade on the opposite side. Black stone washed finish looks really cool. Looks really cool against the burgundy micarta as well. Action is perfectly fine. Not quite as uh, resounding as the superlative we just looked at, uh, but still perfectly fine. But the, like I said, those are your two blades. The drop point or pen blade has a full flat grind is going to be a little better for precision tasks because one it has a little bit of a slicier grind and it's also a little more controllable with that small size. And the larger clip point blade has a little more meat in its uh, potatoes. That's how that works. Sure. Let's go with that. Has a, has a little more, a uh, little more meat at the spine, shall we say, because the flat grind does not go all the way up. 
you have a little bit of full thickness there for a little bit of extra strength as a trade-off to a little slightly less slicing capability, but it's still a thin enough and ground high enough that it's still gonna slice just fine. Also, I should say accessing these is very easy thanks to the full blade cutouts. Uh, so if some folks, if you have like, you know, keep your fingernails real short or you have soft fingernails, sometimes slip joints can be a bit of a pain. It's not gonna be the case for you with this one. And the third implement that I did mention there spins out from the back. That is a small bottle opener, cap lifter, whatever you want to call that. Uh, and that's held open by just a small detent ball right there, which is fine. You know, you're not going to be, you know, subjecting that to heavy use now, are you? Well, some of us may be heavier than others. That's, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. That's the name of the knife. That's why I said it. Good stuff. Check it out. Uh, not going to be around forever. I uh, can't tell you how long it will be around because I don't know how quickly you all are going to buy them. Uh, but speaking of limited or at least seasonal, we have an, a case knife to talk about. This is the Persimmon Orange Bone 2023 Halloween Canoe. Here it is. It lasered with Halloween 2023 right there. The bone looks really good, especially the backside. I like a nice clean bone and then the orange looks fantastic. And on the front, of course, you've got some jack-o'-lantern art to go with it. Full height hollow grinds on both of these blades, both the uh, smaller pen blade and the larger drop point or even spear point blade, we could almost call that too. Nice high polished finish on the stainless steel that they use too. Really cool. My favorite part about this, I mean, it's a cool knife, full stop, but I like the box it comes in too. It comes with, like, with its own little casket, blackened wood, Halloween. And listen, this is my favorite part. It creaks open kind of. It was creaking more earlier. Oh. Creepy. I don't know why I really, but I really like that. Thomas just gave me the blankest stare I think he's ever given me before. <laughs> but I like it. Uh, another orange knife. We've got a fixed blade from LT Wright. This is the Frontier Valley, uh, which they've slowly started uh, transitioning away from their Great Plainsman model, at least for a while, to bring back the Frontier Valley. It's essentially the same size knife, but with a cleaner spine. $124 on this one right here. We've got a three inch A2 tool steel blade with a full flat grind. Perfectly versatile drop point. Great for companion use at, ta at uh, camp. Small whittling, that sort of thing. Small game, certainly. Everyday carry, absolutely, as well. And the handles, orange and black G10 with a twist pattern applied to it, which on the layered colored G10s like this, I think just looks fantastic. And it gives you a little bit of extra grip as well without being too much grip that it's going to cause blistering and hot spotting and that sort of thing. Really sweet little knife, really tough little customer too here with the A2 tool steel. Gonna provide a lot of toughness there. Toughness on small knives, it's an underrated, underappreciated quality by many, but I'm here to tell you it is a pretty great thing. There is the sheath, JRE Industries leather, simple belt loop on the back. Really cool package, lifetime warranty on both of these things, made by hand both of these things as well, which is very cool. Next up, Bonds Creek. Uh, actually, uh, friends with LT Wright uh, and are working together on some knife projects, including some of the uh, Woods Monkey blades uh, that they're doing right now. This is the Badger fixed blade from Bonds Creek. AEBL stainless, another tough steel, tough and stainless. It's not gonna hold an edge as long as your Magna Cut will, but it's actually tougher than your Magna Cut is as well, which is Really impressive for a uh, non-powder metal steel. Uh, 130 bucks ish if I didn't mention that already. Uh, we've got deep country camo rich light for the handles. You can see the layering from the side, a little bit of kind of grooving action going on on the front for your extra traction. The blade finish here, they're calling silver artery is the blade finish. It's almost like a, a pitted powder coat. The cool thing about this knife to me and with a lot of the, uh, the Bonds Creek stuff I've seen so far is it's a cool blend between, you know, your outdoor style knives and your tactical style knives. I think this has a little bit of applications in both scenarios for a, you know, admittedly small tactical knife. It's a four finger grip for me, but the fourth finger is on the protruding tang there at the back. 
Um, but yeah, without you know going into like the full overbuilt survival knife genre, which is often a you know, cross between a combat knife and an outdoor knife, at least in my mind, this lives in a similar uh, similar vein though, and I think they're really cool. Bolt-on handle scales, high-ish flat grind, decently efficient. The uh, the coating there is going to add a little bit of thickness, but AEBL while being stainless isn't the most stainless steel in the world, so the coating is going to help it there as well. Uh, the sheath is also a good compromise between you know outdoor and you know, tactical uses there. Kydex, and it comes with a spring-loaded clip for belt attachment. So it's going to make it easy enough to get on to the belt or inside the waistband even, be a, a fairly small package if you wanted to conceal it. And there is a bit of a J-hook there at the bottom to help it or help keep it from sliding out, even if you kind of press the, uh, the spring-loaded clip a little bit. There's a little bit there to help you out. Really cool little blade. I dig it. This next one is straight up outdoor. Uh, this is kind of a modern American Scandi ground knife, which in a way actually, if we're thinking philosophically here, which why not? Let's do it. The, uh, the modern style, this kind of full tang Scandi ground knife like this is kind of a cross between, you know, your traditional Scandi ground bushcraft knives and the survival knife genre. Splitting, splitting hairs even further. But anyway, four inch blade on these 3V steel now with a Scandi grind. Very, very finely done Scandi grind too. The edge itself, it, it's coming right down to the edge and there's just the hintiest hint of a micro bevel right there, which is gonna help the, uh, the very edge be a little bit tougher, especially when going through harder woods. Uh, that's something that's pretty commonly done LT right, uh, and those folks do that same sort of thing as well. But this man, it is super, like it's a whisper, whisper of a secondary bevel if you're going for that. So if that's not your thing, if you like a true Scandi, you're gonna be able to true Scandi this in no time flat. Handle scales, micarta, contoured, supremely comfortable. I mean, just feel fantastic and plenty of handle length. I do have slightly larger than average hands and without gloves as I'm wearing right here, or as I'm not wearing right here, you can see I've got about a half finger left uh, behind my pinky there. So if I were wearing a pair of winter or work gloves, I'd still have a super accommodating and full grip. And if you have larger hands than, than mine, the edge is not, or the end of the handle is not made thusly that it will be cramping you. You've got big or little mitts on this hand or handle no problem. Little bit of a finger guard, finger guard, not too much. So you've got a little bit of protection from sliding forward, but not so much that you can't choke up real fine and do some really fine, really controlled carving stuff with the heel of the blade right there. A little bit of a sharpening choil, sometimes a controversial thing on a Scandi ground knife, but I've seen it done before and it is gonna make it easier to get the whole edge sharp, which is quite nice. Bolt on scales, about an eighth of an inch thick, 3V steel, very tough, so you're gonna be able to, to thrash on this if you need to, for sure. Uh, comes with either a Kydex sheath or a JRE Industries sheath. I don't have either of them in front of me right now, but the uh, JRE sheath is like this one that came with the LT right, but bigger, and it has a fire steel loop and a dangler attachment as well. So very well taken care of there. Next up, something that folks have uh, been asking for ever since we showed them at SHOT Show uh, earlier January this year, the Cold Steel Competition Chopper from Jimmy Slash. They are here, they are 10 inches long, they are very thick, I mean, what is this, like 5 sixteenths of an inch thick? 0.315, I mean, yeah, chunky, 3V, super tough, and it conforms to the Blade Sports Competition Cutter uh, requirements that, uh, that they use. So. 10 inch blade, roughly two inches high, nice and thick, no point on it, and a bit of a swedge here at the back to remove a little bit of that drag from the spine, especially helpful when going through an object or through hanging rope as, it, as you might be doing during a, uh, an actual competition run or other things like that as well, just kind of removes, like I said, that point of stiction. Whereas the handle gives you plenty of stiction. We should, we should make that a, an actual word now, huh? Injection molded, uh, over molded, over top of a full tang. You do have a full length tang running through this with that uh, rubber over top. Does two things. One, gives you a ton of grip, yes. And it also is going to help absorb kind of the, uh, 
you know, impact shock and vibrations that you're going to get from heavy hitting, uh, especially over longer uh, periods of use, which is a nice thing. And it has one of my favorite things ever on heavier chopping knives, that being a forward lanyard, which is a requirement in blade sports. Uh, but I like to use it all the time on any of my heavier choppers. So your lanyard is going to stick out back here. You stick your hand down through it and then grab the handle. So it's actually coming up and over your wrist here. Nice thing about that is if you lose your grip on the knife, it tends to stay put. Very safe, very uh, recommended by me at the very least. When done right, it's really nice. Uh, speaking of when done right, they pretty much did everything right with this knife as far as I'm concerned. The steel choice is very good. You've got a flat grind, convexed near the edge right there, as you can see. So it comes, you know, maintains that kind of convex geometry there while making it a little simpler for them to uh, mass produce with the uh, bulk of it being that flat grind kind of between you know, there and there, so to speak. Uh, that said, if I didn't mention the price already, this is a big chunk of 3V steel. It is, it does have some more complex grinding going on than many typical production knives. Price on this is about 450 bucks. Comes with a Blade Sports style uh, leather sheath as well, just a simple leather mask with a snap right there, uh, no belt attachments or carrying hardware, uh, which is by design. It's not like they cheaped out and decided you know, not to give you something like that. They were attempting to design something here that would work for Blade Sports. So that sheath also follows their, uh, their spec right there. So really, really well done. The shape on the handle is fantastic. The shape on the blade gives me, uh, makes me think of naughty things. I wanna go smack this around and just have fun with it. Even if you're not doing, you know, your, uh, your camp or sorry, your uh, competition cutting, I think a great camp tool. It chops really heavily, uh, yet it has the precision to do some of the finer tasks during those blade sports run runs as such. You can do some smaller work with it. Probably wouldn't myself in a camp t situation, but it chops like the Dickens and you can split wood with it like nobody's business. We did, we actually did a review on the Condor Wood Buster um, doing some kind of outdoor tasks and such. We'll try to leave a link to that video up here just to give you an idea of what a competition style chopper can do in a non-competition environment. Next up, the Cold Steel Carve. That's Carve with a K, uh, coming in about $107. It is the, uh, the, next, or the next new design with their Atlas Lock, this spine mounted Looks kind of mounted where you know a mid-mounted lockback might be, but it's a lock that you pull back rather than push down. So you can do that sort of thing. It does require you to bring your hand kind of further back on the handle. So it requires a bit of adjustment there. And as such, I think it works better on these larger uh, folding knives as opposed to the smaller ones. But you can do that finger safe action, that wrist flickiness quite nicely. Kind of hard to uh, deliberately, like slowly close this unless you're doing it two-handed. If you want to close this one-handed, you're kind of doing that number right there. Handles are G10. We've got protruding liners here at the back with a lanyard position. We've got a folded over pocket clip, which is reversible, maintaining the uh, ambidextrous quality of this knife because the lock is as well as those buttons or buttons, thumb studs right there. Uh, blade itself, three and three quarters of an inch, Aus 10 steel, very sax inspired. Uh, gives you, yeah, we'll say a bit of a modified uh, Warren, or more Warncliffe vibes there in terms of how you actually use it. But the shape itself very, uh, very distinctly has kind of that broken back sax style to it. The grind itself is flat, about saber height right there. Good stuff. Definitely going to make a hard working knife especially if you're cutting through, making a lot of long cuts through material. This straight edge here at the bottom is less likely to slip out of those big cuts, and yet you still have a very acute tip for piercing and entering as well. Next up, one more cold steel. Lynn Thompson Lynn Signature Edition Tie Light. Six inch blade of S35 VN steel. It is crazy in all the best ways that only cold steel seems to be able to do about 186 dollars for this that's not a bad price for that much s35 quite honestly really really wicked style wise you've got kind of that you know classic uh, stiletto inspired shape just scaled up here uh, the blade shape is a little different from the uh, standard tie lights as well you've got this uh, raising spine with the straight clip point there at the end the grind itself is flat. 
uh, although not a full flat. And then you've got a swedge there near the tip. Again, keeping the geometry here out the tip thinner for piercing and entering or moving through some slashing cuts. Less so here at the back, you've got more of kind of a stronger, you know, beefier geometry if you're pushing through some heavier cuts, uh, which can be an advantage. G10 for the handles, rounded, contoured really nicely. You've got a single position folded pocket clip here. The liner lock is folded over the uh, side of the handle as well, makes it a little easier to grab than it might otherwise be. Do be careful closing that, however, that's a lot of steel coming towards your, uh, your fingers, that's your thumb that's disengaging the lock right there. Now you do have this, you know, jimped quillion right here. And while not, you know, not the best or, or you know, doesn't seem designed specifically to kind of wave the knife open by that, I mean, being able to deploy it by catching the hem of your pocket. It can be done with care, thanks to the, uh, the aggressiveness of the jimping right there, but it's not like you've got the hook to catch uh, while you're doing it. Really impressive. Plenty of handle length here too, if you, as you can see, so. Nice, big working knife, you got a lot of reach. Of course, uh, you know, meant to do a certain type of work too. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, similar blade actually, or it gives me similar vibes. Uh, BRS Alpha Beast 3.0s back in stock. These are a bit of a uh, kind of standard bearer as a you know, premium, uh, yet all just the essentials flipping butterfly knife these days. Uh, they come in about 410 bucks. You got a four and a half inch blade with the distinctive kind of buoy style clip point, we'll say right here, uh, 154 CM steel. Progressively crowned spine here, which is an interesting detail, which if they've had this before, I don't remember it. Uh, in, in any case, it's the first time I'm noticing and appreciating it. You can see up here, the crown or the spine itself is fully crowned. So as you're you know, doing tricks, anything where the spine of the blade might impact your hand or your fingers. It's gonna be a little more comfortable than a you know, crisp edged spine right there. But as you get closer to the pivot over here, it flattens out a little bit. You can see the curve just starting at the corners and gradually taking over as you go out towards the front. That's pretty cool. Nice bit of attention to detail with it, I would say. Handles themselves are titanium. You've got your latch on the bite handle right there none on the safe handle. You do have the ability to install a pocket clip, although it does not come with one. So if you wanted to carry this as you know, a pocketed EDC, you could, and you've certainly got enough blade length there to make some bigger cuts as well. Action, I'm not an expert flipper, but I can tell you it feels absolutely fantastic. Next up, we have got Gen 2 of the large infantry fixed blade from Half Breed Blades. Uh, they are really cool, and it's kind of a, a full tang take on the classic Mark II fighter shape, that classic K-bar shape, but done their own way. Blade itself, classic Mark II clip point shape, complete with the fuller there and a very long swedge. Some uh, have longer or shorter swedges. I happen to like the really long ones. I think they're quite nice. Uh, length is just under seven inches. You've got D2 steel here. Uh, the coating is Teflon. It's gonna help protect the steel from uh, rusting underneath, uh, and it also keeps friction down as well. I wouldn't go griddling an egg on it though. Just slide off the side. Uh, you've got, what I really like that uh, they've kept here is the way they do the cross guard here at the front. You've got more on the index finger side, again, to keep your uh, fingers protected, and less on the back side. So if you, we're gonna be using this in a more utilitarian fashion as opposed to a combat knife fashion, and you wanted to adjust your grip, perhaps bring your thumb up to the broad section of jimping here at the, you know, at the back of the spine right there, that guard is gonna get in the way less than if it were more prominent. So definitely appreciated from a versatility standpoint. The handles are G10. Uh, I should say we've got several colors. This is the, uh, the dark earth version. I think it looks pretty darn good. Mountain tread style texture here, not super sharp though, gives you more surface area for extra retention, extra grip, not too, too much. Um, it may be a little more comfortable, I would say with gloves though. Uh, in bare hands, you probably wouldn't wanna do a ton of big work with this, at least prolonged uh, periods of prolonged work. Gloves, uh, work gloves I think would be the way to go there. 
protruding tang at the back, couple of lashing points, not a sharp point, but a crisped up and very concentrated point on that protruding tang to use it for other scenarios. Uh, the sheath, just like every sheath half breed does is exceptionally well done. Kydex, plenty of uh, holes there for adjusting the belt attachment. And it comes with a dots style belt attachment right there. That's a tech lock compatible hole pattern right there. Just made by a different company in this case with slightly different lockout mechanism. So slide that switch over and that is not going to open on you. But when you are ready to take it off of the belt, there you go. Unlock it, push that button in and you can remove. You can also carry this horizontally, move, the, uh, move that clip around. You can do a lot of different mounting options with it. Next up, Zoo Blade Works with an integral double-edged dagger called the Subsonic. Uh, comes in about $350 right now. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Got plenty of grip there because they went with a very thick blade stock to begin with. That is sometimes the danger of these uh, you know, integral or single piece uh, handles, but the thickness there itself is, man, what even is that? My micrometers aren't even working well for me right now. It's so throwing me off. It's almost a half inch thick down here. Um, so definitely enough to hold on to, I would say, especially with the extra uh, channels here milled in for extra surface area. Same thing goes for the holes in the handle itself. Uh, steel on this is uh, Uniholm Rigger tool steel, which is essentially a uh, Swedish made equivalent to a2 tool steel. So very tough stuff, as we've uh, talked about earlier in this video too. Uh, the grinds are dual sharpened, hollow grinds, not a slicer <laughs> due to this kind of geometry right here. The blade itself does neck down a little bit to a slightly uh, you know, narrower profile than that, uh, respect say 0.4 of an inch, uh, but that's more like a quarter inch on the, uh, the blade size itself. And of course, as you can see, these hollow grinds aren't very tall. So this is all about one thing and one thing only. And I think you can imagine what that thing is. And for doing that one thing, I think this would do that one thing very well. You getting the picture? Let's see the sheath, shall we? It is right here. It is, whoop, carefully. It is made out of Kydex and it has two belt straps right here that you can either thread through that way. You could pivot these, I think, yeah, loosen that up, uh, move them around. You could carry this horizontally if you wish. Uh, although some other things might be better at doing that than these. Let's check the whole spacing, shall we? Let's see, uh, small or large tech lock isn't quite gonna cut it. Let's see, where's that small tech lock? Will that work instead? The whole spacing is small tech lock compatible. So you've got more uh, expanded options right there as well. Couple more fixed blades. Have I mentioned how happy I am that we have so many fixed blades on the table? Uh, I don't think I have. Uh, but an Italian made knife. This is the Viper Giangi. Uh, and the coolest thing about this is actually the handles. Uh, $166 for this, four and five eighths of an inch long drop point blade and 690 steel. Very comfortable, crown spine, and yes, I know I told you the handles are the most interesting and I'm making you wait for me to tell you about it. Uh, full, flat, essentially a full flat grind on this with a full length swedge as well. Awesome, awesome shape. Definitely a great shape for outdoors use. The handle, I think, uh, you know, moves it a little more towards the uh, tactical realm, however, but you could do the outdoor stuff, no problem. All right, the handles, sure touch handle material bolted on. If you're unfamiliar with SureTouch, it is kind of like G10 in that it has G10 layers in it, but they are separated, each of those layers, by layers of rubber. So you kind of have this hybrid in-between material. You get a little more stability out of it, but you get a little bit of the tackiness that rubber can provide and a little bit of kind of that, you know, ability to absorb vibrations under heavy use. If you're using this to like split wood or something like that, that might uh, come in handy. That's really, really cool. I love this stuff. The handle shape itself beyond the material is quite nice. Like I said, definitely kind of locks you in to uh, some specific grips. I think, you know, tactical uses, especially this is going to be well suited for, feels good in that uh, inverted grip as well. Reverse grip, 
maybe not quite as much due to the uh, the point right there on the front, but feels just awesome. I love, love, love that material. And there's a liveliness to this as well. It is slightly handle heavy, but like only just beyond the, uh, the index finger point there. So not too egregious, helps it move rather naturally. Uh, the sheath here is leather. Uh, as you can see, it does have this kind of horizontal strap, but it is kind of way towards the, uh, the tip end of the knife. So you could thread a belt through there if you wanted. It might be a little tippy, uh, but it looks like that is removable as well if you wish. Standard carry is certainly vertical with that right there and retention strap and some supplied leather stripping, leather thong there uh, if you want to secure it around your thigh to keep it from flopping around on you. Last but not least, uh, it is, you know, seasons are turning, hunting season is coming up. And if you're looking for a new, uh, some new affordable small hunting options or even a uh, for you or a gift, got some brownings here to take a look at. Uh, this is the Cutoff Skinner. Uh, it's about $29 and this is the Cutoff Camp Cleaver. Might make a halfway decent small food prep uh, knife, in fact. Halfway decent, anyway. I've seen cheese knife. Oh. Well spotted, sir, uh, as opposed to the uh, more skinning knife thing going on right here. Uh, black stone wash finish, just a simple stainless steel, uh, nothing to get too excited about here, but certainly serviceable. Uh, blade length, about 2.4 inches going from tip to handle scale there, but sharpened edge is actually longer than the blade length, which is always an interesting thing. Uh, G10 handles, two-tone, we've got black outer layers you know, kind of a uh, desert tan inside with the uh, the browning logo engraved through the black, creates a nice effect. Just, you know, good, solid, affordable feeling little things. The sheaths on these are likewise simple and serviceable. Nylon with a retention strap to keep it from sliding out. Comes with a loop for horizontal carry. Bit of an unexpected surprise there though, I would say. Very nice. All right, that's all we've got to show you this week. Make sure to let me know what you thought in the comments of the knives right here. Uh, any of these things catching your eye, looking to pick one up maybe one day. If you want to, check out the links in the description that will take you to knifecenter.com. And of course, don't forget about our long running Knife Rewards program, letting you earn up to 5% or sometimes even more on your future knife purchases when you pick one of these knives up today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center and that's Thomas behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time.